Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Let's get back to work on the Fokker D7. All right, the thing I've been dreading. Yeah, I've been dreading this part. We gotta try to figure out how these things go on. Uh, this is the, the chin cowling. Um, when you read the instructions, and they give you a couple different ways, how they want you to put it together, and it's how you decide to do it. In, in my little mind, I've decided how I want to do it, and it's gonna be an amalgamation of kind of a kind of how they want it done, but I'm gonna modify that. And the strangest thing is, the part that comes first, right about there, that's for the, uh, the aluminum side panels uh, on the side of the forward part of the fuselage. They go right up in here. As of right now, and I gotta do some digging around here, it's supposed to come with enough aluminum, or if you're in Canada or in the rest of the world, aluminium, um, to go on the side of that thing. And unfortunately, out in the box, I've only got one piece. I need two. So uh, I gotta go digging around here because I don't think I took it out of the box and put it in a different location, but I gotta search for it, otherwise I gotta go shopping to try to find some thin aluminum because I don't wanna get hold of Balsa USA and order it because I don't know how much it's going to cost. So while I'm waiting to work on that, we're going to go ahead and get this thing all spun around, flipped upside down, and uh, we're going to get the plans out, and we're going <laughs> to, sorry if you guys got dizzy, <laughs> and we're going to get the plans out uh, just to see exactly how everything is kind of set up, not only with the aluminum, but see if they're going to give me any little bit more instruction on the proper location and find out how things are gonna connect with that little chin cowling on the bottom. All right, what we have here is we've got the lower skin for the, for the bottom part of the fuselage going up front. And where the landing gear is gonna attach, I, I don't know for sure. Looking at the plans, it looks like this eighth inch balsa slab uh, comes in gets glued down in position here, and then I'm gonna probably just make some little cutouts just for the straps, uh, so the screws can go in. So it'll just be a little bit of an area here, a little bit of an area here cut out, and we'll be good to go. So this just needs to get glued into place. But before we do that, what I normally do on all the planes I build for myself and for friends, whether they like it or not, they get a little good luck charm. It's the little smiley face. Yeah, they all have it. Some people don't like it. It's, ain't nothing they can do about it because I put it in a place where they can't get to. This one will be hidden underneath here and will always stay in here. With friends, a lot of times I like to put it in the back of the plane so if they look through it, they could see it in the back. They just can't get to it. A happy plane is a long living plane. A little more complex than you think it is. When they tell you to take your time in the instructions, you better take your time. Because this is interesting. These little tabs right down here, uh, they don't call for them in the plans. They don't call for them anywhere. Where I said I was going to be making some uh, own little tweaks uh, to the way I wanted it set up, I want something that's going to capture this part right in here where it rotates around. So this part here, is going to come in and when it gets screwed down it's got to come across the front and be glued together down the center section so i wanted this to have a spot where if it gets pushed up against it's not going to want to rotate in so i still have some tweaking to do this weird little compound angle this compound curve that i had to put in here is because of what you're trying to cover up so and what they were saying pretty much in the and it's kind of hard to see it through the plans uh, but the pictures, it looked like it was cut the same little bit, like an eighth inch, all the way around the outside edge down to here. There's no wood there. 
So that's why I decided to put these little standoffs in so when this gets glued into position then screwed into place, it's rock solid and it's not gonna go anywhere. So the back side of this, this whole part's gonna have to be cut off, oh, right about, and I gotta figure this one out. It may be cut off right about in here is where it might be terminated. It might be terminated three quarters of an inch because they do make these things long and you have to cut it to fit. <clears throat> so there's just that part done. And I've been working on this for a couple hours. Um, the other side, I gotta go ahead and do the same trim on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of tentatively, cause it, I still have more to sand off on this. Um, I'm trying to go halfway. So I took about half off of what I think I need to. And that way, if I've got to go just a little bit more, I'm closer. Cause I just want at this point, just use, I've got these old school, I don't think you can get them anymore. I don't even remember the name of them. Uh, Permagrits, you may still be able to get these things. Um, if you can find them, it's rough on one side, fine on the other. And because we're working with curves, they work fantastic. So it'll be more sanding on this and then I've got to start sanding this down. So as the way my day's going, I got somewhere to be in an hour. So I got to get moving. Several days later. Yeah, I didn't forget about you guys. I was just so focused <laughs> on making that little chin spoiler, the chin cowling. I, I just, I had to focus 100% on that one. So I did take some pictures. So as I'm talking right now to you guys, there'll be some pictures up in probably this area over here or maybe in that area over there. All right, so when you get everything, when it comes time for you guys to do this on yours, if, if you're gonna go ahead and try it, the instructions aren't that great. You're just gonna have to kind of wing it, so to speak. Uh, it, it wasn't as, difficult as I thought it was going to be but because it's it's got a compound curve on it and it's it's just you got to take your time and do it right and that's one thing they explain on the inside there's a couple different ways they say you can do it um, mine I I modified it I have did it the way I've done other ones other cowlings uh, but this one the way it went together was just a little bit more complex because like I said you had compound curves so you had a lot to work with to make sure everything's going to fit right so with the pictures that I'm showing you, um, that was the, the one picture with the green tape on it. Um, I was actually on a phone with a friend of mine. Um, and so of course I was sending her pictures of what I was working on. And the reason why you had, it's, I taped it together and then when it was taped, the two halves that took me probably about an hour plus to get those things sanded so that they were right up against each other the way they wanted to be. Because it's I started that at about 9 a.m. and it's almost six o'clock. So it's, it's, it's a whole day. So what I ended up doing was as soon as you get it so that everything is touching, you put the green tape across it and then come in with some thin CA and just just let it wick into the crack between the two of them the little bit of a gap hit it with some kicker right away so that way with the accelerator it's going to harden up right away so as soon as that was taken care of and everything was fit exactly the way i wanted it to uh, i went ahead and uh, i took you know, of course took all the tape off pulled it off everything was holding firm because once again it's a compound curve so once it's glued together it really doesn't want to flex out of that so I came in with some, it was like some 80 grit sandpaper and then some 120 grit sandpaper and just scuffed up the inside of that thing on the line. Now, even though I'll show it to you on the plane, I'm gonna show it to you here while we're talking. What I did was as soon as I got the whole inside sanded the way I wanted it to, I came in and I should have, if I had 15 minute epoxy or even 10 minute epoxy, I'd used it, I used five minute epoxy. So it was pretty much, uh, as soon as that stuff was mixed, I had to go right to work. So what I ended up doing was I had some half ounce fiberglass uh, that I was gonna cover a plane with and I never cut it. So what I did was I just, I folded it in half and folded it in half again. So even though it was, it was half ounce, it was more like two ounce. So what I did was I came in, put some five minute epoxy down, and then push that into it and went ahead and just kept pushing all the air out and getting the epoxy in. So this thing is rock solid. It's not going anywhere. So 
Um, yeah, and you can see there's ink there, and that ink is going to be there until I fill it. I've got a little bit of a, it's, the two sides aren't perfect. One of them is just a little teeny bit down. So I'll probably just get some auto body filler and just come in and just do a little bit here. It's not very much, but I'll get that all sanded so that way when it comes time to prime it and paint it, it's ready to go. So, like I said, this part, putting this glue and this together, that was easy. That was, you know, once you once you started, uh, once the epoxy was mixed, you had less than five minutes to get that on there before it started to set up. All right, what I did up in the front was I just took my old, you know, masking tape and just glued a couple pieces of, of planking here just so that this would have something to stop on. Now, I still have to go ahead down in this location because uh, I put these little, what do you even want to call them? It's, it's almost like a little standoff or a little gusset. Um, I still have to sand this one down a little bit. I've got this one fitting nice, and that's just got to fit in nice up here inside this curve. So I've just got a little bit more to go on this side, and it'll be good. But this was what I set up to stop it so that everything was going to meet up front just the way I wanted it to. And like I said, that still needs to be sanded a little bit, but that'll come down. So, so once I got all this stuff set up, uh, like I said, it was tape went across the top up here and then came in with some thick CA. And then once that was set up, you just get the five minute epoxy, you mix it up. And this is the, this is the half ounce. And I just fold that over twice. So that ended up being, like I said, closer to two ounce. So that will work very nicely there. So even though I still have a little bit to go on this, which is just the final touch-ups, I want to do something with these little sides. I like to have them set up a little bit nicer than they are right now. Um, but I've got to see how much, how much do I want to come in and add to these. Because I may come in with a little bit of triangular stock, fill it in here. That way I can lessen it up, but the way the whole thing comes down, it's still gonna have to have a little bit of this down here at the bottom regardless. So that may work, I'm not 100% sure yet. So then the thing is, looking at the instructions, if they show us, as you can see, they did exactly what I did, and that's what you need to do. But what I need to figure out Get on the next page. All right, they're saying they want screws up here on the top and screws here as well. So this part will always be attached to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking of doing something else here. And this is just me and the way my brain wants to think. I can agree with the screws on the bottom, which means they're gonna go up here and then one right in here somewhere. I mean, I don't have a good hard point in here, but it's gonna go somewhere down in here. What I'm considering doing would possibly be putting the screw in here too. Because they want this so that you can go ahead and just pull, pull the front cowling off and leave this intact. So that may be, because if I put a screw in, Sorry about that. If I put a screw on each side down here to hold this piece in position, which would make me happier, as well as the ones on the top, if I need to take the, uh, take the cowling off, because I'm already taking two screws out, two 44s here, I can just have a little teeny uh, Phillips head on that side and this side, so that way this will still stay attached when the cowling comes off. So I may just go ahead and do it that way because uh, it's, I pretty much almost just decided I want to do it that way. And then of course with the landing gear, there's going to be a little bit of a tweak down here because as this comes into place and gets screwed down properly and this goes up over the top of it, I'm going to have to relieve part of this so that it can come down and clear this because the way it looks, this is where they don't show you, but where it sits right there, the landing gear, it is gonna hit the landing gear, but they've got theirs trimmed pretty much flat. So I may just have to do that. I may have to have less of a cup up on the top here on the edge. Just go ahead and bring it up because they don't give me really what I'm looking for. I mean, you can see it down there, but it looks like it comes up quicker than what I've got on this side. So this might start here, and come up quick and almost disappear. 
So that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, I just haven't gotten to that point yet. So at least with the pictures here, we got uh, halfway decent reference on what it uh, what we have to do to it, just so that it's it's going to work. So then I guess I will have to come in and do this. So uh, this will all be done off camera, and hopefully on the next video. Yeah, because this is the end of this video. Um, I've got to see what's coming up next because they want the motor mount stuff, but not the motor mount. My gosh, they actually want the motor, the little faux motor. Um, so that's probably what's going to happen next. So because we are up to this point. So then what I will do uh, as I jump down here during the week, I will start pulling this stuff out. I'll get the bench cleaned off because, yeah, it's a mess. Um, I'll get it cleaned off so at least I'll have a little bit more room to work. And for those of you that have made it to the end of this video, with all the time spent at work, plus the plane, everything else in my life, I decided to get back into doing photography as well. So if you think I got a full plate now, yeah, wait till you see other stuff. Uh, the photography is not really going to show up on this channel. Um, what I used to do back when I was younger, I used to do a lot of black and white photography back when I was younger. Um, and most of my stuff, uh, it was just pretty much outdoors in nature, you know, taking off into the woods. Um, in, in usually what I had done was it was pretty much the interaction between man and nature on how we can build anything. And there's a way that nature is going to find a way to work with what we've done. So although I'm not so much keyed on that, I've still been going out and doing a lot of uh, a lot of photography. So if you guys want to see it, or if the or, or if the woman, the wife, your partner, the other person in your life uh, is interested in photography, down in the description below, um, I, I'm actually I've actually got a link to it. And even though this is called Bud's World of RC, that's called the World According to Bud. So if you kind of understand the whole. So, uh, so yeah, so if nothing else, at least go ahead and just take a look just to see the other side of me, the other thing that I do. So like I said, if my life's not busy enough, I had to add something else to it. So let's just go ahead. We're going to call this a video and I will see you guys next time. I'm back down in the shop.